Next, a federal judge ordered Ripple Labs to pay the SEC about $125 million in penalties, much less than the $2 billion that the agency had sought in a legal battle that began about four years ago. The civil penalty is related to charges of improperly selling its XRP token to institutional investors. Now, you might remember in July of last year, U.S. District Judge Annalisa Torres in Manhattan granted Ripple a partial win in the case, finding that sales of XRP on public exchanges were not considered unregistered securities offerings. The judge subsequently rejected a request by the SEC to appeal that ruling. Now, yesterday evening, Ripple CEO Brad Garlinghouse reacted to the decision, writing that the SEC had asked for $2 billion and the court reduced the agency's demand by about 94 percent, quote, recognizing that they had overplayed their hand. He called the ruling a victory for Ripple, the industry and the rule of law, adding that the SEC's headwinds against the whole of the XRP community are gone. All right, for more on that order in the Ripple case, I spoke to the company's chief legal officer, Stuart Alderodi. He also took to X yesterday, calling the order a final judgment. He wrote that the court rejects the SEC's suggestion that Ripple acted recklessly and reminds the agency that this case did not involve any allegations of fraud or intentional wrongdoing and that no one suffered any financial harm. When speaking with Alderodi this afternoon, he reacted to the judgment and explains what's next for Ripple. So I saw your post on X yesterday reacting to a judge fining Ripple $125 million after ruling that institutional sales of XRP violated federal securities laws. Now, you called the SEC's request for $2 billion in fines and penalties an absurd demand and wrote that you actually respect that $125 million fine that the court has imposed. How are you feeling about this final outcome to a long and protracted legal battle with the SEC? Uh, we're feeling really good about it. Um, Ripple, when it was first sued by the SEC almost four years ago, uh, said that we were going to defend this case not only on our own behalf, but on behalf of the entire crypto industry. Uh, this administration, uh, with this SEC under this chair, has clearly taken an anti-crypto stance and has engaged in a war on crypto that's playing out in the courts. Um, I think they lost on everything that was important to them, uh, trying to establish that a token itself, in this case, XRP, can be considered a security was soundly rejected by the court. And what the court said is a token is never a security in and of itself, just like a bar of gold uh, is never a security. You can certainly package commodities or virtual currencies up and sell them as securities, but they're not securities in and of themselves. And that's the core clarity that we saw in this case and the establishing that XRP is not in and of itself a security is the law of the land. What the judge did find is that certain historical sales uh, beginning uh, around 2015, um, the way that those sales were packaged with sophisticated third parties, they should have been registered under the securities laws. And that's the piece of the, um, uh, the decision that we respect. Um, the judge rejected a $2 billion ask from the SEC because she found that Ripple didn't act recklessly. We didn't act with any intention to defraud anybody. And in fact, there were no victims. The counterparties to those transactions suffered no financial loss at all. Uh, but staying true to the law, since there was a technical violation of the failure to register those historical sales, she did impose a fine of $125 million. That's something that we will pay with cash off of our balance sheet, and we look forward to moving forward. And hopefully this turns a page, not only for Ripple, but also hopefully finally this administration will turn the page on their war on crypto and uh, hit the reset button. Let's talk about some of the next steps here. By when is Ripple obligated to pay that fine? And when that happens, is that the end of this chapter that started back in December 2020 when the SEC slapped Ripple with charges? Or do you expect an appeal from the SEC? Can that even happen at this stage? Or are we finally done with this uh, legal battle? Well, uh, in, our, in our minds, we are finally done. Um, the, the fine uh, pursuant to the court's order needs to be paid in 30 days, and uh, we will do that. The SEC uh, certainly has the option to pursue an appeal. I think they've got 60 days to make that determination. 
But again, um, we're, we're focused on the finality that this order uh, gives Ripple. Uh, we want to focus on continuing to grow our business, both um, globally and domestically. Uh, we like the clarity that uh, this lawsuit uh, and the outcome of this lawsuit has provided to us. Um, and that's where that's where we're going to be focused on. And again, uh, if the SEC um, is a rational actor uh, and they are um, uh, and this administration truly is serious about hitting the reset button on their war on crypto, there should be no appeal and everybody should be moving on. Now, a lot of people saw the initial ruling on XRP as a big win, not just for Ripple, but the crypto ecosystem as a whole. You run Ripple's legal team. Any big takeaways on what this means for your company in particular and also the industry more broadly? Yeah, I, I think um, I, I think it has a tremendous impact positive for Ripple and a tremendous impact positive for the industry more broadly. Uh, Ripple, when we were first sued in December of 2020, as I noted earlier, we said, look, we're going to defend this case, not only because we think that uh, allegations that are being made against our company are wrong minded, and we think ultimately they're not going to be able to survive um, judicial scrutiny, but we're going to defend it on behalf of the entire crypto industry because we knew that we were the tip of the sword. We knew that the SEC would start with Ripple and then start working their way down and uh, bring litigation uh, in lawsuits and enforcement actions against the rest of the industry. I'm not sure everyone believed us four years ago. Everyone believes us now because that's exactly the playbook that the SEC has sought to advance. And what do we now know? We know through our case, the court has um, found that the SEC was not engaging in a faithful allegiance to the law. That's a quote. We know in the Bitcoin ETF case, a, another court found that the SEC was acting arbitrarily and capriciously. We know that there was a federal judge in Utah that sanctioned the SEC for uh, engaging in outright fraudulent misrepresentations to the court. So this, this war on crypto has really skewed the SEC's core mission and skewed their commitment to kind of stick to their lanes in their jurisdiction. And what we need as a country is to hit the reset button. And what we really should be focusing on is creating clear laws, rules and regulations so this industry can thrive in the United States, just as it is thriving outside of the United States. A lot of this goes back to the same issue that industry players have been talking about for years, something that you've brought up a couple of times just today. There are no hard and fast rules on crypto from Congress. And absent that, the SEC has been seen as policing the space through these enforcement actions. We have seen some progress in D.C. with Fit 21, but still the U.S. doesn't have a clear framework. We're about to have a change in the White House. How are you navigating the continued legal ambiguity in the states? Are you I mean considering decamping abroad or are you finding ways to make it work uh, here in here in the U.S.? Well, uh, since uh, December of 2020, Ripple has grown our business exponentially, but 90 percent of that growth has occurred offshore in Singapore, in the EU, in London, in Dubai, in Brazil, all under regulatory supervision and with regulatory permission. Unfortunately, the ability to grow our business in the U.S. has been hamstrung and the ability to grow crypto in the U.S. has been hamstrung. So these jobs, these tax dollars, these great minds that are um, uh, backing and developing this innovation, they're all moving offshore. So we need a clear set of laws, rules and regulations in the U.S. for crypto. The SEC appointing themselves, self-appointing themselves as the crypto cop on the beat uh, for um, uh, for this industry has been a failed strategy, as we prove it in our case. Their jurisdictional um, reach has limits, and they can't supervise industries, or they can't supervise transactions that are not in and of themselves security transactions. And simply calling crypto securities because you want to supervise it doesn't make crypto a security and that's what we have established clearly in our case so we're very invested in a good policy outcome 
uh, we engage on both sides of the aisle on this, and we're hoping, again, uh, that um, uh, the combination of our litigation outcome, the combination of the election season we're in, we can really see a reset button here, and we can finally move away from wasting tax dollars on victimless charges in courts and building a rational and practical framework for the crypto industry in the United States. Alderodi also discusses his recent political donations and his reasoning behind them. You'll be able to check out his full interview over at cnbc.com slash crypto world. Okay, that's all for Crypto World today, but we'll be back again tomorrow and we'll see you then.